If their aversion from you is hard on you. The word kabura means something that is heavy on you. The word kabura also means something that is difficult. That is difficult to bear, difficult to take difficult to tolerate. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن كَانَ كَبُرَ عَلَيْكَ إِعْرَابٌ I'rab means someone's turning away. You're talking to someone and he looks the other way. You're trying to say something to someone, he doesn't listen to you, he runs away. He turns his back towards you, he runs the other way, he ignores you, he neglects you. These are all the meanings of i'rab, the Arabic word. So when Rasulullah used to give da'wah to the kuffar, instead of listening, at least listen. You don't have to obey, you don't have to accept, you don't have to embrace what the person is saying, at least listen to the person. The kuffar, they knew the effect and the power of the words of the Prophet They knew that if they heard the Prophet 
quietly, calmly, they would not have resisted but to accept the message of the Prophet Therefore, their strategy was to avert and to turn away from the Prophet ignore him completely. This is what Ya'ad is. So when Rasulullah would give da'wah to the people, and as I mentioned before, that this surah was revealed in Mecca. So keep in mind that we're talking about the period in Mecca, not the period after the migration. Before the migration, we're talking about. So mostly the Prophet ﷺ would talk to people in Mecca or around Mecca. And mostly the people that he would talk to were the pagans, mushrikeen. So when Rasulullah ﷺ would try to talk to, to, to them about Islam, about Allah, about Akhirah, about life, about death, they would simply ignore the Prophet ﷺ and turn away, run away. And obviously, if you are the well wish. You don't want anything from people, you just want the good of people. You just want the benefit of people. You don't want any money from people. You don't want any benefit from people. Instead, you want benefit of people. You're, you're doing it only for the benefit of people. Only to save them from hellfire. Only to save them from adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet the response of people is not even to listen to you, but to turn away from you and to ignore you completely. You can imagine how difficult this must be for the Prophet ﷺ. If you're trying to work for the benefit of someone, like for example, I'll give you an example. If you are one of the chaplains at the at the prison and you're working with the inmates these chaplains they're working with the inmates just for the benefit of the inmates they and in particular the volunteers if you're volunteering and you're going, you're trying to help the people in there and if you're spending your money you're spending your gas you're sacrificing your time you're doing everything just for their benefit, you go there and when you talk to them, they don't listen to you. Or when you go there, they don't show up. How would you feel? You would feel betrayed. You would feel that people have misused you or people have taken advantage of you. Our Prophet wasallam, he did this for the whole humanity. He was working for their benefit. He was working not only, not only on some people, but all people, day and night, giving them da'wah, explaining to them the things about their aqidah, and trying to save them from the hell. And yet, people wouldn't listen to him. People would ignore him. People would turn away from him. And even worse than that, people would call him names. People would call him uh, insane, crazy. People would give him names that did not have any place for the Prophet ﷺ. So you can imagine how difficult this must have been for the Prophet ﷺ to bear. To even think about it. You would cringe in your heart. Why, why these people don't understand that I'm trying the good for them. I'm trying to save them. And yet, people don't listen. So, this was very difficult for the Prophet So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the pre past two ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to comfort the Prophet Allah knows what was going through the, the emotions of the Prophet what was going in the heart of the Prophet ﷺ when all of this was happening? He was giving them da'wah and people wouldn't listen. It was very difficult for the Prophet ﷺ. And sometimes the Prophet ﷺ would feel so isolated, so lonely, and so abandoned that he would have 
those suicidal thoughts in his mind as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for comfort the Prophet that don't worry. You, you don't need to pinch yourself for these people. You don't need to grieve yourself for these people. You don't need, need to pain yourself for these people. So the previous two ayah were the same message. And this ayah continues. So this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِمْكَانَ كَبُرُ عَلَيْكَ إِعْرَاضُهُمْ If their aversion is truly difficult for you, فَإِنْ اسْتَطَعْتَ أَنْ تَبْتَغِيَ نَفَقًا فِي الْأَرْضِ أَوْ سُلَّمًا فِي السَّمَاءِ فَتَأْتِيَهُمْ بِآيَةٍ So if you have the power to dig a tunnel into the ground or put a ladder up to the sky and you went either into the tunnel or into the sky and brought a verse, a sign for these people, they would still not believe in you. They would still not accept you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the Prophet the, the extreme version that even if you were to do the most difficult thing for these people, those for whom Allah has not written the hidayah, the guidance, they would not get the hidayah. They would not believe in you. They would not listen to you. They would not embrace you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the two extremes. That either, there are two possibilities. Either you go all the way into the heavens and you bring something for them. As they used to demand that, why don't you bring some book from there? Why don't you bring something from there so we can believe in you? Or if you go underground, dig a tunnel and go into the ground and bring something for them, a sign for them, they would still not believe in you. Basically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to say, giving them signs is of no benefit. These things will only benefit them, those people who have, who are fortunate to embrace Islam. But for those who are unfortunate, who are deprived of Islam, these things are of no benefit. And the word nafaq has been mentioned. Nafaq is used for the tunnel. And the reason why it's called nafaq, from, from the same word comes the word nifaq. And from the same word comes the word munafiq. And the reason why, okay, nafaq is the tunnel. So what's a tunnel? A tunnel is basically deception. So if you were standing on top of a tunnel, you wouldn't know that there's a tunnel underneath. And if you were in the tunnel, you wouldn't know what's on top. So it's a two-way thing. So it's meant to deceive you. Tunnels are basically, as you know, the concept of secrecy as well. There are secret tunnels. You make those tunnels in order to hide something, in order to keep a secret. A, a secret way, a secret path. So the reason why a tunnel is called tunnel is because you can hide something in the tunnel while the people who are outside the tunnel wouldn't know what's inside. So the reason why munafiq is called munafiq in Arabic language because he hides something in his heart which is not on the outside. So on the outside he shows that he's a Muslim. But on the inside, what he has is kufr. This is why a munafiq is called munafiq. Because on the inside he has one thing, on the outside he has the other thing. There's also an, an animal which digs tunnels. And he always makes two, two entrances and two exits to each tunnel that he digs. Because he can deceive through that. So he goes in from one, one end and comes out on the other end. And that is also called munafiq. That animal is called munafiq as well. <laughs> and if you go to Saudi Arabia, you find this word written on highways and on, on other places as well. There are signs that say nafaq. Nafaq means tunnel. And then there are pedestrian tunnels in Mecca because people, hajis, they travel from Mina and they come to Mecca, and there are millions who just walk. They don't take any taxis, any buses or anything. So there are tunnels for pedestrians. And the, wor the word for pedestrians is musha in Arabic. So the, the word that you would see is nafaqul musha, the pedestrian tunnel. 
So nafat is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used in Quran here. The first time my mind went to this, the, uh, this word is when I was making hajj about seven years ago. And I saw the word nafat uh, in Mecca on the tunnel. And immediately my, man, my mind went to this ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the tunnel in Quran. And this was this was the ayah or in Kana Kabu Ali Ya'radu, Fa in is Tata and Tabtari and Afakan fil Ardi or Sulam and Fisama. The word Sulam on the other hand is uh, for ladder. Uh, so if you if you put a ladder that goes all the way into the heaven, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Aw Sulla and Fisama or a ladder that goes into the heaven, Fatatiahum bi ayah and you may bring uh, a verse, a sign for, the, uh, for these people. وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَجَمَعَهُمْ عَلَى الْهُدَىٰ Allah says, if Allah wanted to bring all these people into hidayah, and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to gather all these people on guidance, on hidayah, He would have done it. So there's a wisdom in the strategy, in the decisions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had decreed that everyone would be a Muslim, everyone would have been Muslim. Because there's nothing that can defeat the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, وَلَوْ شَاءُ اللَّهُ لَجَمَعَهُمْ عَلَى الْهُدَىٰ If Allah had willed, He could have gathered them together all on true guidance. But no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants people to make decisions for their own. People will, will choose whether they want to choose the truth or the falsehood. So Allah says, Be not you one of those who are the ignorant. Ignorant meaning you, you don't stress yourself. You don't give pain to yourself for the ignorance of these people. It is only those who listen to the message of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu will respond. Only those will answer the call, those who have the ability to listen and understand. So people listen, but those who have the ability to listen, accept and understand, they will respond to the call of the Prophet sallallahu like Abu Bakr like Umar like Uthman like Ali all these companions. They listened and they responded in affirmative. They accepted the message and they embraced Islam. And the dead people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect them on the day of judgment. And then Allah will judge them. This applies to two kinds of people. The kuffar are basically tone deaf. And they are they're dead in the sense that they, have, they don't have the ability to listen and understand. If they listen and understood, they will accept it. But they listen, most of them don't even listen. And those who listen but don't understand will obviously not, will not get it and will not embrace it. So in that sense, they're dead. And we use this in, in our language as well. Whenever we speak, he's like a dead person. When we say that someone is not willing to accept the message or when when uh, when someone is not ready to accept it and we use the word dead so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says well, the dead people Allah will resurrect them and they will be returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they said why is not a sign sent down to him from his Lord from his master Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Verily, Allah has the power to send any sign, any sign down. But the majority of people do not know. Majority of people don't know that Allah has the ability to send the sign down. But the reason why Allah does not send down a sign from heaven, because if He does, then the matter will be decided, the matter will be will, will be decreed, 
and there will be no more respite. People will not be given a second chance. At that time, either you accept it or you die. Either you accept it or you're done. That, so in, in order to <coughs> withhold that ultimatum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not send the sign down. As people demand it. So if, he, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to send down the sign as people demand it, then the matter would have been judged. وَقُضِيَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْحَقِّ وَهُمْ لَا وَمَا مِنْ دَابَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ There is not a moving creature on earth وَلَا طَائِرٍ يَطِيرٌ Nor a bird that flies بِجَنَاحَيْهِ With its two wings إِلَّا أُمَمٌ أَمْتَالُكُمْ But our communities and nations like you مَا فَرَّتْنَا فِي الْكِتَابِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ We have neglected nothing in the book then on to their Lord they shall be gathered and resurrected. This ayah of explains that whatever crawls on earth, whatever walks on earth, whatever moves on earth, the word dabba is used anything that lives, breathes, and moves, whether it crawls like reptiles or it walks like animals, humans, or anything that flies. The word ta'ir means bird. Anything that flies with its wings. So anything that flies has wings. Whether it's, uh, it's a bird or any other, any other creature, anything that flies, it has wings. Even angels have wings. Angels fly. So angels have wings as well. So this is, this is a one rule of thumb that anything that, need, that can fly will have to have wings. You cannot fly without the wings. So as of us, when we need to fly, we take an airplane and airplane has wings as well. And then we have helicopters. Helicopters have, have wings as well, but those are not fixed wings. Those are rotors. But those are also a form of wings. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says anything, there's nothing that walks on earth, crawls on earth, moves on earth, any animal or any bird that flies or anything that, that flies, illa ummun they are but communities like you. So just like you are nations, you are communities, they are also in nations. So there are nations of birds. Every species has its own population has its own number, has its own nation, community. And you take that concept and you can apply it to every species and every animal, every creature that exists on earth. It's not one that exists in the entire universe. There are many more. Like humans, there are not one, there's not one human or two or three, but there are nations of humans. There are over seven billion, uh, uh, 7 billion humans on earth. So there are communities and nations. Just like that, among birds and among animals, there are nations and communities. Some scholars say that the word illa umamun amthalukum means they're like you, means that they, they are also created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like we are. They're also fed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like we are. They're also sustained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like we are. They're also controlled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like we are. They have also been given these things that we have, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And some say that it means that they also glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like humans do. There are humans who glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And among birds and others, there are also those that remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا فَرَّتْنَا فِي الْكِتَابِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ We have not neglected anything from the book, in the book. So the book could refer to the preserved tablet, لَوْحُ الْمَحْفُوظِ Or it could, it could also refer to Qur'an. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not missed anything. Anything that has its existence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has it recorded. He has not missed anything. On the day of judgment, we will be resurrected towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
وَالَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا Those who reject and deny our signs سُمُّ They are deaf وَبُكْمُ And they are dumb فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ And they are in darknesses So those who deny our signs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to them as dumb and deaf Dumb means the words that come out of their out of, out of their minds they are not capable of soundness and deaf means they do not they do not understand what is going through their ears so whatever they're listening they they don't have the ability to understand so their likeness is the likeness of a deaf and a dumb person and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fil dhulumat they are in darknesses because they are in disbelief, they are in kufr, so they are, they are in darknesses. May yasha illah This is the most important part of the ayah. Allah leads astray whoever He wishes to. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants someone to be misguided, Allah will lead him in that direction. And Allah puts on the right path that person who He wills, who He wishes. So if Allah wishes to put someone on the right path, He will be on the right path. And if Allah wills a person, if Allah's decree and will of that of someone is that He, he is on that path, He will remain on that path. قُلْ أَرَأَيْتَكُمْ إِنَّ تَكُمْ عَذَابُ اللَّهِ Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Do you see yourselves? If the adab of Allah were to come to you or the day of judgment or the final hour were to come to you are you going to call anyone else but Allah besides Allah are you going to call someone for help tell me whatever your true answer is Allah says himself nay to him alone you would call you will only call Allah for help. In times of in times of disasters, in times of hurricanes, in times of storms, in times of natural uh, calamities, people naturally turn towards Allah. Even if they don't believe in Allah, they will turn towards Allah. Because our nature calls us to call Allah and ask Allah for help. So Allah says, but yeah, you're definitely going to call Allah for help. And then Allah is so merciful and so kind that even if you don't believe in Him, Allah will relieve, Allah will give you relief and Allah will save you from that calamity and from that hardship. Inshallah, if He wishes. And once you, at, at that time, you forget about the gods that you used to worship. You forget about the deities. You forget about all others. And you turn towards Allah for help. And Allah has been. <laughs> Verily, we sent messengers to many nations before you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And we seized them with extreme poverty or loss in wealth and loss in health with calamities so that they might humble themselves, believe with humility. Any questions? Do you have any, um, I don't know, uh, sort of off topic, but how many people were Muhajir from Makkah who accepted Islam and went to Medina? Do you know? Well, Muhajir is any companion of the Prophet who migrated, uh, who migrated for the sake of Islam and for the sake of Allah to Medina. And among the, but generally the term applied to those Sahaba, those companions who migrated from Makkah to Medina, because the majority of Sahaba who migrated were the Sahaba from Makkah. We don't know any exact number of those companions, but their names have all been recorded. Uh, there were, there were, they were in, you know, at least in hundreds, if not in thousands. Uh, they all uh, came from Makkah, but 
In addition to that, there were also Sahaba who came from other places besides Mecca, who came from Ta'if, who came from uh, nearby towns, and even Yemen and Syria and Palestine and other places. So those Sahaba were also called Muhajirun, but these, these Sahaba were obviously the most uh, prominent ones among the Muhajirun who had, uh, who had migrated from Mecca to Medina.